Hello, it's midnight right now and I just pulled out the camera because I've been wanting to make an update video for a while now since I haven't uploaded in a while. Um, yeah, basically I'm still alive. <laughs> um, I'm kind of busy now even though that's kind of weird to say because of the current situation we are in. Um, yes, I am staying home, I am staying safe. But, you know, I am working now. I also have another project I'm working on for something. I also um, need to work on making my island look nice in Animal Crossing. The medicine that I'm taking, the ribocyclib oral chemo stuff, it lowers my white blood cells and so I'm, I fall into that category of being immunocompromised, which means my body is not as good at fighting off infections as a normal healthy person. Um, yeah, so I am being careful, I'm being safe, I'm wearing a mask when I go in public, I'm really not going in public that often. I'm still seeing people. I see my friends. No, no, I don't see my friends. I see my family. I see Gray and his family. So basically just that circle of people. And if I go out in public, it's usually just to, you know, get my prescription <laughs> or I just get somebody else to do my grocery shopping and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I'm staying safe. I hope everybody's staying safe. Um, the other update is basically about the oral chemo. I think last time I talked about it, I was just talking about how horrible it is and how it makes me really fatigued and nauseous and I have diarrhea and those are like the big three things. There are other side effects too, like my eyebrows are still going away and my other hair other places on my body is very thin or non-existent. Not my head hair though, so that's good. I'm very thankful for that. Um, yeah, so, but those big three, nausea, fatigue, and diarrhea, those were really like the worst things. I switched to taking the medicine at night instead of in the morning. And I was originally hesitant about it because I was always feeling so nauseous in the mornings and I thought that if I took it at night and slept the whole night without any food in my stomach that the nausea would be even worse in the morning. But it's actually helped me a lot to start taking it in... Kiwi. It's actually helped me a lot to take it at night and I think it's mainly because I sleep through the worst part of the nausea which was always really bad in the morning and then got better as the day went on. I still sometimes have really bad nausea in the mornings and usually when I have bad nausea it's in the mornings and then it kind of goes away but it really just depends and sometimes I can expect it like I know why it happened and sometimes I have no idea, it just decides to happen. Sometimes it's worse when I get to the end of the three week cycle. Uh, something that I should explain if you're new is that I'm on this oral chemo where I take it every day for three weeks and then I have a whole week off and then I start again. And since the other thing that people are asking me is how long do I have to do this for? It's not really clear. Um, doctors have told me five years. They've told me, you know, as long as it works. So it's, there's not really an end date. Kiwi, come here. Cause I know you guys want to see her. There we go. I'm oh, sorry, my floor is messy. <laughs> my sock. Yeah, okay. There's not really an end date on it, so. You, you good? No? You good now? 
yeah, so there's not really an end date on that and I'm kind of just trying to deal with the side effects and you know not die so but basically my update is that overall I think that my side effects are getting better on that there are still days that are really hard that are really bad uh, the nausea is a lot better the diarrhea is a lot better the fatigue I'm not really sure if it's better I don't know if it's because I'm staying home so much because I can't go anywhere and because I have to work from home I think that not having to go and do things is helping with the fatigue, obviously. Um, so I don't feel as tired as I would if I had to go out and do stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if the fatigue gets worse once uh, all these restrictions are lifted and we can get back to normal life. Okay, um, um, other update. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone because I'm trying to remember everything. Other update is, is that I don't like this length of hair. I really just don't know what to do. I'm just kind of going to let it do its thing and uh, wait it out until I can put it back into a ponytail. Because let me just tell you, this is, this is the hardest. I'm sure it'll get harder than this. When it gets like a little bit longer, it'll probably be even more difficult. But... When it's shorter than this, it's really easy to manage. You just get out of the shower and don't do anything and it's fine. And when it's longer than this, it's easy to manage because you can just put it in a ponytail. But like this in-between phase, this is annoying because you actually have to like make sure it looks good. And um, I mean, if you want it to look good, but I have decided that I am just giving up on that. I'm not trying to make it look good. I'm just gonna wait it out. I just kind of get up it just does its thing. I really don't know. So, yeah. Hot flashes. Hot flashes are getting worse. I thought they were getting better and then they started getting worse and I think it's really just because the weather is getting warmer and it's harder to be cold. <laughs> it's harder to stop them. So usually if I have a hot flash, I can just go outside or something or lean against a window that's cold and it helps it go away and now I can't really do that because the weather is warmer and so if I go outside it's still like the same temperature as it is inside and all that so yeah uh, that's kind of a bummer because summer's gonna come and my hot flashes still aren't under control I was kind of hoping that maybe my hot flashes would be under control by the summer, but obviously that's not going to happen. My other update has to do with my post lumpectomy arm movement. It has been a time, <laughs> let me tell you. I've been to physical therapy because um, when you have any like major surgery, you're gonna have like limited motion. So I was having trouble lifting my arm like up like this and ow. Okay, so let me tell you what's going on now. So first I had some cording. You can see in some pictures I posted on Instagram. I'll put one right here for you to look at. Yeah, it's a picture of me in a bathing suit, but you can like really see the underarm. Uh, you can see the cording. And so I had some cording and I did physical therapy and I stretched it out and it got a lot better, a lot, lot better. And then I got some cording in my rib. I have another picture about that because my rib just started looking really, really strange. It looked like bigger than the other side and I was like, what is going on? And then shortly after that happened, I like actually felt the cord and I had a bunch of pain in my rib and it was really painful to just touch to, I couldn't sleep on that side and that was rough. Went to physical therapy again and that also helped that. So, and then, so things were going really, really well with physical therapy. I was getting a lot of motion back and it seemed like I really just needed to get past one thing. So. My arm was able to move like up. I was able to put my arm straight up, but I wasn't really able to go like back. I still can't really do it as much as I can with my right arm. 
And so I was really focusing on stretching that out. I was like putting my arm in a doorway and like moving forward and trying to get that range of motion back. And in doing that, I kind of stopped the other stretches that I had been doing because all of that part had been healed. And I'm wondering if that was a bad idea because now I have all this pain like in my elbow and it went down sort of to my wrist. And yeah, so I think the cording is back, but in that location now. And it's kind of annoying because I keep you know, stretching and getting parts better and then other parts that I'm not focusing as much on get bad again. And I think this is actually the most painful that I have and it just really hurts to straighten it out. And now I feel like all of that um, work to like be able to get my arm up kind of uh, was for nothing because now I'm back to not being able to do that again. So. That's really annoying, but that's where I am. And I had that surgery at the end of August. So it has been a really long time of me trying to get that range of motion back. And I know some people still have cording like two years after their surgery. So I'm just gonna keep doing stretches and hopefully, hopefully that'll stop because that is very annoying and very painful sometimes. I think that's all my updates that I had. Here's my advice for the current situation we are in right now. Be respectful. Mind your own business. Those are my two things that I think that's all. That's all. Don't panic. I don't I don't like it when people say don't panic because I think it's dumb because I don't think anyone's really panicking. I, I don't know anyone personally that's panicking. I think everyone just keeps saying don't panic. Uh, yeah, so be respectful. Please, I don't think there's anybody that can see the full big picture. I certainly am not a doctor and I sh don't know what we should be doing, if it's okay to be out of our house, if it's okay to be doing things in public if it's not okay. Um, I can only do what people tell me I should be doing. And I think that the people in charge are getting information from people who know more than the average person. And I think all of it's too complicated for just a normal person like me to really understand. So yeah, be respectful. Mind your own business. If you see someone doing something, let them, like, you don't know their situation. And yeah, that's all I have on that. These are very strange times. Uh, stay safe out there. Yeah, that's all. Bye. <laughs>